It's been over two years since I opened my grocery store, Marche Homme, so I'm gonna give you an update and share my progression. Also, thank you to BMO ETFs for sponsoring this video. So let's start with the cons so we can end this video on a positive note. The first thing is increasing customers is very, very difficult. People will go to the grocery store that's nearest to them. So unless there's new properties, new residences, growing families, the customer list stays pretty stagnant, which is the case for me. If I were downtown or in the center of the city, then I would probably have gotten more foot traffic, but I'm not in an area that has a lot of foot traffic, so I'm definitely missing out on that. That being said, I'm still in a very busy area, but the customer list has stayed pretty stagnant over the past two years. Also, if you're new here, my name is Ritu. I make content on business and share my journey as an entrepreneur. So if you're interested in this kind of content, make sure to subscribe for more. The second thing is there is a lot of maintenance to do. There's often things breaking down, things not working, properly and so on sometimes it's little things like we need a technician to fix the cash but sometimes it's really big things like the fridge being down and mind you one fridge holds a lot of inventory so if the fridge is down the products go bad really fast and also I'm open seven days a week more than 12 hours per day so the machines and the equipment is generally always in use thirdly this is something I didn't really know how often would happen but now I know but prices are always fluctuating this means that we always have to go and change prices readjust everything and this is a whole other job a whole other responsibility that you need to take on or an employee but given that i'm not a big box store and it's a small store i don't have digital price tags so i have to manually do it which is quite time consuming now another thing is we have no control over the prices if my supplier decides to raise the price of a bag of chips from one dollar to three dollars we have absolutely no control or no say on the prices. We just have to go with it and we also have to keep an eye on what other people are selling the same products for. Fourthly, staying on the subject of prices, margins are super low. Now, this is something that I was well aware of even before getting into the business. However, things were not this expensive two years ago, especially not in Canada. I'm seeing prices I've never seen before in my life in grocery stores in general, not just my suppliers. And with rising costs from suppliers, the margins are just shrinking and shrinking by the minute. I do feel like one we're going to go towards a route in which grocery stores won't have a choice to increase margins to the point where it's going to affect customers and not the stores. I don't think it's necessarily something that's going to happen this year, but maybe in the near future, because if we continue taking on these low and shrinking margins, I just don't think it's sustainable for any grocery stores, not just mine. And as you may or may not know, I started this venture and all my other businesses by myself. And this was possible because I invested a lot of my hard earned dollars. If you want to grow your money as well, one way to do this is to invest in the stock market through investments like ETFs. If you don't know what an ETF is, it's basically a basket of securities. Instead of investing in many different stocks, you can simply invest in a fund that tracks the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in the US. By doing so you're investing in companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, and so on. The BMO S&P 500 index ETF does exactly that. What I personally love is that they have a wide range of ETFs to cater to everyone's preference. For example, if you're into growth funds but want an all-in, one low-cost investment solution that's built for you, then look into the BMO Growth ETF. This is an ETF that invests in a basket of other ETFs, giving you a diversified portfolio. This is just two options out of several. Now, if you're wondering why you should pick BMO, it's simple. They are an expert in the ETF space and one of the largest ETF providers in Canada. They have been partnering with Canadians for over 12 years to change investing for the better. Head over to BMOETFs.com to learn more. Okay, so the fifth thing is something I really wish I knew before getting into the business. Thankfully, I'm able to manage it, but I might have not been able to. Owning a grocery store means that your electricity bill is going to be through the roof, like literally. Of course, when you start a business, you're going to have a budget and you're going to try to allocate that budget. For example, you're going to have budget set aside for either rent or mortgage, inventory, suppliers, what else is there, labor and so on. But electricity is something that we honestly don't even hear about. After rent or mortgage, your biggest expense in a grocery store is probably going to be electricity. Maybe labor is gonna be close to that, but in my case, electricity comes second. Like I said, I am able to manage it, but honestly, the cost is absolutely insane, so please make sure to look into it. However you can, maybe you can talk to the realtor, or if you're buying the business from someone, make sure to ask them about utilities, how much it costs, and so on. Okay, so the last con is also a pro for me, so I'll let you decide if it's a pro or a con because it's really opinion-based. This is a really boring business for me. My team and the people that work for me love it, but this is really to each their own. However, this is also a pro because a boring business equates that it's a simple business model. Very simply, you order things, you place it on the shelf, and you sell. It's very routine-based, it's very uncomplicated, it's 
it's just boring for me personally but you might enjoy it i'm very grateful for this business though because my other businesses are more challenging so sometimes it's nice just to have something boring on the side to do now let's get into the positive points i have a full team now which means the business is passive i don't really need to come to the store anymore unless it's absolutely necessary however this was only possible because of the takeout service that i have inside based on just a grocery sales i would not be able to afford a manager a cashier a butcher and more in case you didn't know my grocery store is two units and one and one of the units already had a built-in commercial kitchen this is definitely what pushed me to get the store we sell meals snacks tallies and more so most of the time people that go grocery shopping are also going to get food and vice versa i don't want to give you any false expectations i just want to say that building a team was really really hard and it took me over a year people i hired at the beginning were not serious not showing up um they honestly did not care some even stole so I just want to say that building a team is really, really hard and finding trustworthy people is also hard. This video is really a general overview of different points, but if you want a video on something specific, just comment it down below and I'll film a video on it. Another huge pro is that there is no really marketing needed for a grocery store and marketing is super expensive. It's really just based on word of mouth and people that are close to you are going to come to you. Unless your products suck, expired and so on and prices are too high, they're going to go elsewhere. But if you're close to people, they will come. I tried marketing. Marketing and honestly, it was a great waste of money. Another major pro is that because I also bought the grocery store from someone else, it was really simple to adjust, very easy, came natural, and the business model is also very simple. I will also mention that having good suppliers is super, super important. I have a whole video on it if you're looking for suppliers. My suppliers help me a lot on what to get, what to not get, how to price things, where to even place things, and so on. Because my suppliers help me a lot, there is not that many challenges in the business itself when it comes to products. We don't do extensive research on what sells, what doesn't sell. My suppliers just tell me. It's also very simple. If something is not going off the shelf, then it's just not selling. My suppliers let me exchange my products if something doesn't sell, as long as it's not expired. So that also helps me out a lot. The next pro I'm not going to get too deep into because it really depends on where you live, but the taxes in the business is fairly low compared to my other businesses. A lot of the things in a grocery store is non-taxable. And I look at the taxes I have to pay for my event venue and my financial literacy program and social media, and it's insane the final point i want to mention is cash flow given that i sell products so food that is in need stuff sells remember it's a staple whether it's raining outside there's a snowstorm recession pandemic people need to eat location is a big factor but as long as you're accessible you will have sales of course you don't want to place yourself surrounded by 17 other grocery stores when you start a business like a restaurant it takes a lot of time to get clients in because there's so many options out there but if you're in a grocery store people need to eat people need to shop so they will come i really hope this video was helpful to you if it was please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more and i will see you in my next business related video bye